I've been waiting for a very long time for the Linus Tech Tips Linux Challenge to finally hit YouTube, and as of today, it is finally here. And overall, I feel like it is a very well-made video, like most of the Linus Tech Tips videos are, but I thought it'd be a good idea to give the perspective of someone who has been using Linux for a couple of years, because both Luke and Linus are very happy to admit that even though they've used Linux a little bit in the past, they may not be that experienced with it, and there's a lot of things they will get wrong. And the general idea is they're going to be daily driving Linux on their personal rigs for an entire month, doing things like gaming and various other things that may or may not work well under Linux. They're going to have a list of challenges they must complete, and that's going to be the way it's sort of structured. But if either of them drop out, there's going to be a penalty, and I'll let Linus tell you what that penalty actually is. And if either of us caves, they have to dye their hair in red, green, blue, and yellow quadrants. And honestly, I am really excited that this is the penalty they decided to go with. There were other things that were on the table, but I want to see one of them with their hair dyed like this. The problem, though, is that judging by the Wan show, I don't think either of them is actually going to cave. So the first problem that Linus came across is trying to decide on a distro and ran into the same problem that everybody else does. But it is full of jargon that a non-Linux enthusiast couldn't possibly be expected to know. Not to and this is the problem with a lot of Linux material. A lot of the articles and a lot of the videos and a lot of the wikis and things like that are sort of all made for someone who is already experienced with Linux. So if you're looking up, hey, what's the best gaming distro? It's sort of assumed that you already have a distro. So you already know about these basic concepts. And I'm not perfect in this either. I certainly use jargon that really is outside of the scope of the, the video I'm doing, but I've been trying to avoid it and only use the more advanced jargon in more advanced topics. Let's say I'm talking about Linux kernels. I think it's fairly safe to assume that if you're looking at a kernel video, you know about things like bootloaders, you know about things like compile options and things like that. But he goes on to say some more about these articles. Not to mention seemingly conflicting information. How is it that Ubuntu can be simultaneously easy to use and beginner friendly and a hassle to set up? Now, the problem with this right here is that Linus, I don't think he knows how to read. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm being mean there, but that's not what it said. So it's easy to use and stable, very beginner friendly, but then getting set up for gaming can be a hassle. You can have things that are easy in one way and then a hassle in others. So the point he's making here makes no sense with this example, but, okay, here's the big but. The point he's making does still make sense. So you'll see a lot of articles saying things like, oh, Manjaro is an amazing first distro. It's amazing for gaming. And then you'll go to the next article in your search results and it'll say, this is horrible. Never use Manjaro. You should use this instead. So you will get that conflicting information. It's just this example he had just, it wasn't the best he could choose. And there's one more point about these articles. This one, I just don't disagree with at all. Included games are not the reason that anyone chooses an operating system. How how are these articles so out of touch? You know, I, I, I don't think anyone can answer that one. It's not just in the Linux space, it's sort of in the entire tech space that you'll have this problem. It's just there's less people in the Linux space and it's uh, a bit more concentrated, I would say. A bit later on, Linus makes a mistake that I see a lot of other people make. With a bit of elbow grease, the gaming-centric features and tweaks of one mm -hmm. distro could be applied to another, but with some exceptions. The Pantheon user interface, for example, is specific to elementary OS. Mm -hmm. And for a more gaming-related example, TechRadar mentions a feature of GamerOS, now called Chimera OS, called the Chimera app that sounds super cool. Now, here's the problem that Linus has sort of gotten himself into. Thinking that distros matter more than they do. And this is a problem that I see a lot of people make when they first choose a distro because it does seem like distros actually do matter. But both Pantheon and Chimera can be run on other distros. It's just you're going to have to spend some time actually getting that set up. 
Linus does correct it a bit later with Chimera, saying that it's just on Arch that it's easy, and on other distros it might be a challenge, but... At the end of the day, if you want to waste your time, you can get anything working on any distro. Moving on to the distro choice, initially Linus was going to be going with Pop OS because he has an NVIDIA graphics card and he's used the Pop Shop before and likes the Pop Shop. And you know what? All of that is totally fair. Even though the process of setting up NVIDIA graphics is fairly well documented at this point, it can be a bit tedious if you're not used to Linux and it's very time consuming. And you know what? If you don't want to waste your time, I cannot fault you for that. Pop OS is a very fast growing choice among Linux gamers, and this is very heavily in part by Linus Tech Tips, but a lot of other people are talking about it as well. He didn't end up sticking with Pop OS, and that's because the devs actually shipped a bug around the time this, uh, this challenge started, which you'll see broke his system. As for Luke, on the other hand, he has a very... Interesting choice. I'll let him say what it is. I, on the other hand, after a lot of deliberation, decided to go with the daring, the uncompromising Linux Mint. I, I don't have anything to say about that. It's Mint. It's a classic choice for new Linux users. It's still perfectly fine. However, Luke is a little bit worried about something. But that doesn't mean I'm not a little scared of you. <laughs> I'm pretty technical and I work in development every day, but Talk hardcore Linux guys. chads are absolutely terrifying. You scare me and I really want this to go well because I still want you to like me when this is all over. Please don't be mean to Luke. Luke is lovely. Uh, I, look, I don't think anyone's going to be mean to Luke. He's actually had a really positive experience. Um, Linus, on the other hand, well, let's see what Linus has been doing. If you watch the LTT video, they jump back and forth between Linus and Luke trying to set up their systems. I'm just going to go through Linus's stuff first, and then we'll go to Luke after that. Linus's years in tech have conditioned him to do something really sensible, and I recommend all of you do the exact same. Obviously, I'm not 100% committed to this yet, so my plan is to remove my existing SSD from the system. I do this every single time I try to reinstall Windows, Linux, doesn't matter what it is, because if I accidentally pick the wrong drive, things are going to go very bad. So just make sure the only drive you have around is blank drives or drives that you don't care to wipe. Linus has a very weird setup. You probably know that his computer lives inside of a server rack, but it gets weirder from there. I was worried that my Thunderbolt connection, I used Thunderbolt to connect to a dock for my main display, was going to cause problems with the installer, because there's no drivers installed or anything. We'll get to that in so just I, a moment. I hooked up my monitor that's here in the server closet, but... Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Hey, there it is. It works. Crazy. It's almost like there are drivers installed. Okay, so a live CD isn't like the Windows installer, so... A live CD is literally an entire Linux system that you've put onto, like, a CD or a thumb drive. So if you have that plugged into your system, that's where your drive is going to be coming from. It's not strange that this is actually working because the Thunderbolt drivers, the NVIDIA drivers, all of that stuff already set up. The Thunderbolt drivers are actually in the kernel tree, so no setup is even required there. But Linus also has a GoXLR. Basically, it's a little mixer board that doesn't work without the proprietary Windows drivers. At least, it shouldn't be, but this happened. I knew audio was going to be a challenge because I don't think the GoXLR has any kind of... Oh, this is interesting. Output. It's routing the input to the output, but why is it doing anything? I didn't think it was supposed to work at all. I know there is a third-party project trying to get the GoXLR actually working on Linux. I don't know if that ships with Pop OS or if it just started working in the kernel or something. I have no idea why it's doing this. Okay, now it's time to watch Chaos and Sue because this is when Linus completely nuked Pop OS. I will definitely need Steam. Failed to install Here's our first problem. Wait, you're trying to remove. There is some warning here. Okay. Packages. What are, you, what are you talking about? I've done nothing with this other than install that hard info thing. You know, it's hilarious. The last time I tried to do anything on Ubuntu, I ran into this exact same thing. I was told, it's super simple. You just install it. No. Now. You do not. What? This is stupid. What's going to happen? Okay, so we're doing a sudo apt-get install Steam. Okay. This is the solution. And here. 
this right here, if you are using any distro that uses apt and you see this message, stop. Stop what you are doing right now and ensure that you read this message and make sure you know what it's going to do. But let's see what Linus does. And I have to type, yes, do as I say, in order to install it. And maybe it will install and launch now. And... What is the point of having a... Oh. It's dead. He has just nuked his graphical environment. Now, it is very easy to blame Linus here and say, oh, he should have just read the message. It's entirely his fault that this broke, because this is basically the equivalent of downloading a random program on Windows and then giving it admin privileges. And while he definitely does have some fault here, I think a lot of the fault also lies on PopOS as well. So this is a massive wall of text with no indication except a couple of messages in here that it's a problem. This section all should have been highlighted in yellow or red, just some sort of color to make it stand out from the rest of the wall. If it's highlighted, I'm sure Linus actually would have read it then. Plus this bug, especially considering that PopOS is focused around gaming, should have never been allowed to ship in the first place. However, since Linus installed Pop, this bug has been fixed, so installing Steam now is perfectly fine, and has been made to make sure it cannot happen again. The way they made it so it can't happen again, is by making it so it literally cannot happen again. So, now if you try to go to this section, it's just gonna say, Yo, you're not allowed to do this. And you know what, I, I think for something like Pop, that is a sensible default. After this point, he was completely done with Pop OS and was just going to stop for the night, but his wife was still awake, so he decided, okay, I have a backup distro, so let's go and try out Manjaro. Now, we can have a back and forth about whether something Arch-based is a good first distro. I am going to be squarely in the camp that it is not, but... A lot of articles do recommend Manjaro, and a lot of YouTubers do as well, so it seems like a good choice from Linus's perspective. Coming from someone using Arch for three years, there is way too much that can go wrong on an Arch-based system, not to say that it's always going to break, and that's not what I'm saying when I say this, but if something does break during this experience, I don't know if Linus is going to want to spend the time to actually fix it. But in case you didn't know, KDE actually has the best UI designers. They're so good, in fact, they'll do things that make absolutely no sense. Why are the two columns open source and installed? Does this mean, is this proprietary? Uh, does, if anyone knows what that means, I would love to know. Why are these the columns? That makes absolutely no sense. I would love to talk about Luke's setup for a while, but there's really not much to say. This is one of the few problems he had. The desktop, kind of, you can see where the, where it's supposed to sort of end, but it keeps going and the mouse can go over there. So I'm gonna right click, right pull. For reference, this is in the live CD. Below the, the Mint logo. Um, nothing shows up, but there's the menu. If I try to mouse over these, I can't select them. I guess the, uh, the live CD for Mint is just not happy about working with more than one monitor. I can't say I've ever experienced a problem like this because when I'm doing live CD stuff, I don't need more than one. I'm doing stuff in the installer. He also had this very, very minor issue. One minor issue. I can't go over there with my mouse speaking. Mm -hmm. My mouse has to go all the way left and then it's over there. And every single one of you that has two monitors have experienced this at least once. What is happening here basically is that the order your monitors are going to be loaded is based on the order that they appear on your hardware. So if you plug them in in the wrong order, then this might happen. Or if you're using say like DisplayPort and HDMI, those are gonna be loaded up in a very specific order and there's no way to actually change that. The way you fix this is by just changing the monitor layout in software, which there's probably a tool in Cinnamon that lets you do that. And also this very minor installing issue as well. Well, I selected install. <laughs> it made me put in my password twice and now it's removing. So the, the software manager just like died for whatever reason. 
It never stopped trying to do that removing thing, but I just closed the package manager, um, clicked on to, I'm going to call start. I don't what I have a feeling happened here, because it seems like it's working just fine, is for whatever reason, it double prompted him. But when it got to the removing, because the program didn't exist when the removal started, it just hung. But the install kept working because you don't need to have something installed to actually install it. I, I could be completely wrong there, but that seems like a likely problem. That's pretty much it for Luke. I wish I could talk more about Luke's section, but there's really not much to say. His experience has been basically the general, I'm new to Linux, I'm not sure what I'm doing. But Linus has one last thing to say, and I just want you to hear it and try to comprehend what he's actually saying. Discord looks like there's a way to get it going. It involves a lot of command line. Hopefully I won't brick my OS. Now, what you heard there is Discord, there's a way to get it going. It looks like it involves a lot of command line. What? what? What do you mean it involves a lot of command line? It's setting up Discord. You have Pamac. You can just install it and it works. Unless he means getting like screen sharing set up with audio, which involves messing around with like pipe wire and pulse audio stuff. But if it's just getting it working, there's no command line needed there. So the sections they did in their home, those were completely unscripted. So whatever happens basically just happens. But these sections in the studio, those sections right at the start, those really should have been checked over by someone, probably Anthony, because there were a couple of mistakes there that really shouldn't have been included. But overall, I think this was a good start to the series. I think it would have been incredibly boring if both Luke and Linus had a perfectly fine experience. I think it's actually a good thing that Linus's experience has been absolutely horrible because things like, oh, it says open source and installed as columns, and oh, the error messages aren't highlighted, it's just part of this massive wall of text, are things that probably should be addressed, and hopefully Destum Environment and Distro Maintainers see this series and think, oh yeah, maybe some of those things should actually be worked on. Obviously, I had to cut a lot out to actually make this video somewhat watchable, so I highly recommend going and watching the original video to see some of the extra things, because I mainly focused on the problems they had and some of the things that they got wrong, but they did have some positive experience as well. So that is going to be everything for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.